Hi, this is uh, Jurgen Rasmussen speaking. Welcome to the Provocative Hypnosis Vlog. This particular video is about the right to hate and the myth of tolerance. Now, for those of you who really care about freedom of speech and, uh, and liberty as, as a political uh, right, know that freedom of speech and liberty is really moving backwards in in the western world there, there's quite a bit of data to to support this and the reason i mention this is because the same misunderstandings that are at root for us losing our political liberties and both uh, legally and also culturally uh, in that we have a tendency to, to self-censor more and be more politically correct. The same misunderstandings are contributing to therapists and coaches uh, selling a notion of tolerance that really has a tendency to result in people becoming less tolerant more intolerant and less free. I'd like to read a little definition here from UNESCO. It's UNESCO's definition of tolerance from 1995, which was the year of tolerance on the world stage. Uh, here's the definition. Tolerance is respect, acceptance, and recognition of the rich diversity of the world cultures and our ways of expressing ourselves and being human beings. Now, to most people, this probably sounds great, but it really is a recipe for disaster. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Back in the day, if, if you look at freedom of speech in Greece, and you look at freedom of speech in Rome, you'll see two very different ways of, of thinking about freedom of speech and tolerance. And this conflict is still very relevant today. In Greece, uh, freedom of speech was a right given to the population by the state. And the way they thought about it was that freedom of speech was meant as a tool to promote the state, to promote the democracy, and to promote the social order, uh, in a sense. Now, in Rome, freedom of speech was recognized as an individual right, not something designed to promote the state or promote democracy or, or to promote anything else, but really the freedom of speech as a right in and of itself for the individual to speak his or her mind. Now, of course, I deeply prefer, prefer the Romans' ways of thinking about it because that really gave rise to the idea of tolerance. Tolerance for people having different views than our own. Now, tolerance back in the day was not about political correctness. It was not about staying silent while people rave about the most stupid and barbaric ideologies available. It was not about cultural or moral relativism. It was not about pretending or having to pretend that all cultures are equal and, and that, for example, a religious society is, is just as good as a more secular society. It was not about that at all. That has nothing to do with tolerance. Tolerance back in the day was about a legal and political way of handling disagreements. It was the obligation and the commitment to not use violence and to not attempt to use the state to prohibit exactly those opinions that you hate, that you dislike, that you really despise. Now, that does not mean not arguing against those very ideas, of not challenging them, of not disputing them. Of course you could. That's the whole idea of tolerance. It was a political, legal framework that ensured that you didn't use violence and that you didn't attempt to use the state to, to ban those very same ideas.
Now, today, the main reason why we are losing our, our freedom is that people have begun, just like with the UNESCO definition, which has nothing to do with what was meant originally by, by tolerance, people have begun to, to think of tolerance and freedom as opposites. Meaning that for there to be more tolerance and less hate, you, you somehow have to uh, restrict freedoms. But, but this is a completely false dichotomy. Again, you know, pretending to be neutral, pr pretending not to judge, pretending not to have an opinion, pretending that all ways of seeing the world are, are equal or just as of old, has nothing to do with, with tolerance. It has more to do with, with, with being a coward and with, with not exercising critical thinking. So it's, it's this tendency to conflate, um, to, to not really differentiate between critiquing ideas and using violence that really are at play. And a lot of people too are, are failing to make the distinction between acts of violence and acts of verbal critique. You really have to make this distinction to be able to live in a free society. So, for example, in the United Nations Declarations of Human Rights, uh, you know, it, it it really encourages its members to have laws against uh, hate speech, for example. But this idea of having law against hate speech, this this came from from Stalin's Soviet Union back in the day. And the instructions from, from Moscow, or, or that intent from Moscow, was not to protect freedom of speech. It was to make sure that, that the state could ban opinions that it didn't really agree with or, or didn't really like. So this, this same notion of, of tolerance as the opposite of freedom and this failure to distinguish between violence uh, in terms of physical acts and ideas critiquing ideas has crept into the fields of coaching and therapy as well and with rather dis disastrous consequences there's a lot of talk about love and empathy and compassion but there's really very little emphasis, for example, on having clear boundaries, of not having to put up with bullshit, of being willing to, to take a stand morally, ethically, being able to, to, to for example, say, no, I, I don't believe in that. I, I think that's a really stupid idea, or I won't put up with that in my life, or here are the principles and values that I'm willing to stand for and, and willing to fight for. So dishonest people have a tendency to turn into more neurotic people. So if we emphasize tolerance as being silent or having to respect or having to be polite or having to be diplomatic of essentially relativizing and, and being politically correct, we are selling the idea of dishonesty as a way of life and there, there's no peace to be had by not being honest and, and not being truthful so uh, I think I th think this is a very very important point so for example when the European Union uh, has the alleged noble intent of uh, eliminating all hate on the planet to most people, that sounds like a really good idea, but it really is quite an oppressive idea. You know, the, the person who wants to ban or eliminate your, your right to hate, that's just as oppressive as when dictators and, and uh, religious leaders of the past would attempt to ban people's right to love each other or to love the person that they actually loved. It actually is just as oppressive. And I, I'd like to end up with, with a final uh, story.
Um, I remember many, many years ago of uh, listening to an interview by the very famous defense lawyer, Jerry Spence, who was famous in part because he hadn't lost a case in many, many years. Now, one day he was hired to defend a black man who was accused of murder and rape of a white woman in the Deep South. Now, I have no idea whether Spence's client was, was guilty or, or innocent, but Jerry Spence did something very unconventional. When he selected the jury members, he would only select the people who admitted to having some racist tendencies. And a lot of people, you know, were thinking that Spence has gone nuts. What the hell is he up to? Is he, is he trying to get his client convicted? And Spence actually won the case. He, he, he got his client off. Whether that was deserved or not, I have no idea. And of course, I can't really make the claim that there's necessarily any connection between the selection criteria of the jury and the final verdict. But Spence was asked about this, about, you know, what was the logic here? How could you select people who admitted to having racist tendencies? And I'll never forget Spence's answer. He said, because everybody has some racist tendencies. By the way, this has been confirmed by the implicit association tests done in recent years. So pretty much everybody has some racist tendencies. Now, of course, he wouldn't uh, choose people from, you know, the Nazi party or or skinheads or anything like that. But, but he said the most dangerous people are the people who pretend to have no biases, who pretend to have uh, no prejudice. Because these are often the people with very little self-insight, very little insight into the nature of, of being a human being. And, and people who are either severely lying to themselves and or others. And where his rationale was, if I can get people who can admit to having some racist tendencies and to own up to them, to have that level of self-insight and honesty, then perhaps they will display that same level of insight and honesty and give the defendant an actual fair trial. And it seems as if that is what actually happened. And I think that this is the direction that we have to, to move in, both as human beings and with our clients. We, we have to aim for honesty, more honesty, more debate, more discussion, the, the willingness to actually name, you know, having the right to actually hate, having the right to actually think and feel what we think and feel and to be able to freely express it. That's also the best way to combat really bad ideas. You, you don't combat bad ideas by suppressing them. You combat them by more ideas, by having them discussed, by having people being exposed to better ideas and, and to argumentation. And if you look at this whole concept of freedom of speech, you'll see that most people don't really get the idea. If, if you push them a bit on it, You'll see that most people want freedom of speech for themselves, but they would like to have some restrictions on the freedom of speech of other people, especially people who don't agree with them. Now, that's not freedom of speech. The, the, the way you can see if someone really gets freedom of speech is, are you willing to grant freedom of speech for your enemies? Can you grant freedom of speech for the Nazi, for the Islamist, for the jihadist, for the communist? If you can't, you're not really endorsing freedom of speech. This, this is also why hate speech laws are really, really stupid laws. And it's also why, for example, in Europe, after Charlie Hebdo and, and after uh, the, the other terrorist attack in France, when the, the French government says that it's for freedom of speech and it then throws into jail people who deny the Holocaust, that's not freedom of speech. Freedom of speech means that you have the right to be stupid, to, to be uninformed. You, you have the right to be David Irving. You, you have the right to be a Holocaust denier. You have a right to say that you think women are inferior or some races are, are less cognitively developed. You know, whether that may be true or not, 
Freedom of speech means that you have the right to say those things. It also means that other people have, have the right to ridicule you, to challenge your ideas, and perhaps to even boycott you. But that's how ideas and that's how human beings have a tendency to develop. And I, I'd like to end on, I promised that the last point was the last point, but I'd like to end up on a, a different one. And if you look at many spiritual or so-called spiritual communities, I think Byron Katie had it right when she said, don't be spiritual, be honest. And of course, there really is no contradiction there because both honesty and spirituality are supposed to be about the same thing. It's the same with science. It's supposed to be a quest for truth. But I remember, for example, very clearly going to a NLP uh, master prac and trainer training where the trainer was selling the idea of perception as projection, which is basically true. Uh, and then acting in very unethical ways on stage. Like he, he would attempt to anchor feelings of guilt and fear to any objections that people might have for signing up for his very, very expensive courses. And of course, a lot of people's uh, internal bullshit detector signals were, were kind of going off. But with that framework in place, it was very easy for the instructor to sell the idea that, look, if you feel anything but love and light, you have more therapy to do on yourself. And here's the next course. And in, instead of that framework being something that, that inspired more honesty and more self-reflection, it ended up inspiring political correctness. You, you would have a bunch of people who would go around saying, wonderful, that's perfect. I love everybody. That's magnificent. And, and they would say this no matter what anyone did. It was completely phony and completely fake. And it, it ended up for many being a, a way of posturing, meaning that if you claim to only see light and love everywhere, then that means that you're a very evolved and very nice and very loving human being. So at, at least you get to promote the facade. But that's not having a spiritual practice. Of course, there is a glimmer of truth in that the ability to, to treat people with unconditional acceptance, to be able to come from a loving and compassionate place, uh, really is unconditional in, in one sense. But to pretend to be more evolved than we are and, and, and to kind of spout the, the rhetoric of, of compassion and love and tolerance when we might not necessarily operate there. It does not lead to tolerance. It, it does not lead to growth. And it does not lead to, to deeper spiritual insight. It leads to more phoniness. And it leads to us being fakes. And ultimately, it leads to us being more neurotic as a result of being less honest. So remember, you have the right to hate. And remember that tolerance does not mean political correctness. It does not mean politeness. It does not mean keeping your mouth shut when you, when you disagree. It does not mean pretending that uh, Islamic societies are just as, as evolved as uh, uh, secular societies and that by being neutral and having no opinion of it that you're evolved or, 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 or compassionate. That's complete bullshit. Tolerance is just about refusing to use the law to attempt to prohibit other people's opinions and to not use violence. But you can debate, you can discuss, you can argue, and you can be honest. And that is ultimately, I think, the most important thing. So if you have any comments on this, feel free to um, leave it uh, um, and to argue, you know, wherever you found it. Thank you.